As I said in the last video, I will now present the basics of vector rotations. We'll be thinking about vectors in G3, but the idea extends to other dimensions. Recall real quickly that unit by vectors square to negative 1, and thereby can behave like the imaginary unit. Note that any unit by vector squares to negative 1, not just the basis unit by vectors. Now consider the geometric product of two unit vectors A and B. We can substitute the dot and wedge products for their angle representations. The magnitude of A and B is 1, so this simplifies. Now, the Euler formula allows us to rewrite the geometric products of A and B. It then follows that the inverse exponential is B times A. The rotation of A through the angle theta into B is easier to see without the exponential, however. But keep in mind the exponential is useful for actual computations and for conceptual generalization. We can reinsert the exponential to show the rotations. But does this generalize? As it turns out, it can. But we can't multiply by just one exponential in the generalization. We must multiply one side with an exponential and another with the inverse. And to avoid rotating by 2 theta, each side only rotates by half of theta. This is equivalent to the square root of the exponentials, which is the equivalent to the square root of the two vectors being used to form the rotation. This construction rotates any vector by theta and preserves magnitude. There's also an official notation for this, called rotor notation. This is defined by the following. Furthermore, rotors can be combined to create new rotors. Suppose I have vector B formed from A and rotor 1, and vector C formed from B and rotor 2. Then I in fact have vector C formed from A, which is first rotated by rotor 1, and then rotor 2. Therefore, there's a new rotor which was constructed from the composite rotations of rotor 1 and rotor 2. Because the set of rotors is continuous, this composition is continuous. This means that rotors form a continuous group called a Lie group. That's all for now. The next few geometric algebra videos I make will introduce a new geometric algebra using nilpotent vectors as the basis, and review the fundamentals of geometric algebra.